You're tuned into the COVID-19 Community Report here on KDRT LP 95.7 FM in Davis, California. I'm Autumn Labbe Renault, and today is Tuesday, January 12th, 2021. We're sharing local news and resources, focusing on what's impacting Davis and nearby cities in Yolo County during the COVID-19 pandemic. My goal with this show since starting it 10 months ago was to help weave a narrative about how deeply and broadly the pandemic has impacted local lives here in Yolo County. In the course of those 10 months, I've talked to scientists, elected officials, medical personnel, teachers, students, arts and culture organizations, and community leaders, among others. And as we approach episode 50, I'm astounded at how many stories there are still to tell. Today's a good example. My guests today are Bruce Gallaudet, sports editor for the Davis Enterprise, and Joel Rappaport, who's coordinating the Davis Independent Music Initiative. Sports and music are two areas that have experienced tremendous impact during this time. We'll get to those interviews in just a few minutes. I wanna take a moment to acknowledge the passing of James Glicka Hernandez this Sunday due to complications related to COVID. James was an important figure in local theater circles and a staunch advocate for the mentally ill in Yolo County. DMA's team recently had the opportunity to work with him on an event in support of Pine Tree Gardens. We send our love and care out to his husband, David, and the rest of their family and community. It is a weird thing to read COVID statistics each week and realize we're at the point where people I know are part of those numbers. I had my own scare last week when someone inadvertently exposed me and then tested positive. I'm fine with a negative test result, but remain sequestered, and I'm recording this week's show from home. My thanks to fellow Cater DJ Don Shore for offering to edit it together for me. On that note, testing for the COVID-19 virus via Healthy Davis Together this month is available seven days a week at two locations. The Davis Senior Center at 645 A Street in Davis and the Mondavi Center at 523 Rack Hall Drive on the UC Davis campus. This free testing is offered to anyone who lives or work, works in Davis, but is limited to asymptomatic individuals only. For more information, including testing times, dates, and appointments, visit healthydavistogether.org slash testing. Healthy Davis Together is a joint project between the City of Davis and UC Davis with a goal to prevent the spread of COVID-19 and facilitate a coordinated and gradual return to regular city activities and reintegration of UC Davis students back into the Davis community. For county residents outside of Davis, find the county's free testing site info and much more at yolocounty.org. This is where you can also find the dashboards with case numbers and test positivity rates for all areas within Yolo County, and it will tell you such things as we had 90 new cases reported on Saturday alone and are rapidly moving towards the 10,000 case mark countywide. We're going to take a minute for music and we'll be right back with Bruce Gallaudet. Few things get people's passions up like sports. Parents and coaches want their kids to play for the team building, the discipline, and the peer development. And people love to watch games, developing identity and investment in favorite teams. It's not called America's pastime for nothing. Let's just say that cardboard cutouts in the stands isn't quite the same, and a year without sports has left people somewhat on edge. This past Saturday, Davis police had to break up a fight involving some of the parents at a large youth football gathering in Community Park. With over 100 participants, including parents, coaches, and players, they'd been practicing in Community Park for several days. After having been given warnings regarding distancing protocols, required mask wearing, etc., the police were called in and the crowd was dispersed. My first guest today is known for his longtime association with local newspaper, the Davis Enterprise, where he's currently sports editor in a year without sports. Here to tell us more is Bruce Gallaudet. Thanks so much for joining us, Bruce. It's totally my pleasure. Thanks. So in the normal year uh, of, a, of the life of a sports editor, you'd be covering everything from preseason practice to club sports to Little League to UC Davis football. And as we know, 
these are not normal times. We're at the fist fights in the park stage. Um, that was a surprising bit of news from the weekend. From your perspective regarding sports, what's been the biggest challenge as you've watched the pandemic unfold? Well, from a personal standpoint, uh, trying to um, trying to give the correct feel for how the athletes and coaches are dealing with all of this. It is um, it, it is a, a tough time for any student athlete, whether it be at UC Davis or at Davis High School. Um, but um, you know that all of these kids are out there because they're passionate about what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And the coaches are there because they're passionate about what they're doing. Um, but, but nobody's playing sports right now. Um, and and the, the future uh, changes by the minute. Uh, one, for example, with the UC Davis basketball program, mm -hmm. They, their season was originally delayed, postponed from the beginning of November back to the 25th. Um, then the UC Davis women and men uh, played games that first weekend um, and have not played since December 4th because of edicts by the, um, the state and the Yolo County Health Department. Mm -hmm. um, and each week they think that they're going to play the following weekend and since December, early December um, word has come by midweek that you have to cancel your games so it, that emotional roller coaster for the student athletes and the coaches that are so invested um, in these seasons is is just totally mentally taxing yeah. The the university also has had five fall sports canceled because of um, uh, because of league um, deciding to right. scrap sports, and then high school um, has not played um, a sanctioned contest since um, the I think it's the fourteenth of March. Mm -hmm. last March. So they're almost a year into being on hold. Um, and, and they also have faced several postponements as the high school. Um, and right now they're, they have their fingers crossed that there will be three seasons jammed into two between now and the middle of June. Mm -hmm. But it's with the, uh, with the county, like most counties in California, sitting in the most restrictive purple tier of the road to recovery, as it's called, um, it would be a, f a full three weeks before regular practices can be held at the high school too. So th the bottom line is that, that at UC Davis and at Davis High School, um, what were fall sports uh, have become winter and spring sports and those winter and spring normal sports um, are seeing truncated seasons being planned, uh, but the numbers are prohibitive, and those seasons, the in their entirety, those seasons on both campuses are right now in jeopardy of being played again. You know, a few months ago, I, I interviewed Corinne Motokaitis, who's one of the long-term um, swim coaches here in town. And, and one of her concerns is that as sports opportunities um, evaporate in high school, th there's then a, a big um, trickle down, if you will, in that those opportunities are also drying up at the college campus. And so many kids who counted on those sports scholarships and things to get them by, they're, they're not gonna see those opportunities moving forward. And so she said that actually in sports, we're gonna be feeling this impact far longer than in, in, in some other areas for this reason. Your thoughts? Well, thanks for making it even more depressing than it is. <laughs> the, the I'm a realist, Bruce. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, and as is Corinne, and she's exactly right. The, the, I was going to mention when we got around to high school um, that 
that there's two things here. I, I feel bad for the the university um, student athletes, but the NC2A has said back in November that because of COVID, college athletes nationwide will get an extra year of eligibility. Mm -hmm. So if you're a senior at, at UC Davis, you can you can come back as a graduate student or or change up your um, uh, class load to have you qualify to come back as a senior plus one. That doesn't happen in high school. Right. It, it, for example, uh, both the basketball programs and football programs and baseball programs at Davis High, uh, the majors have outstanding senior athletes that are on hold and some of those athletes were hoping that their seasons would be in full bloom um, and that they would be getting noticed by college recruiters yeah, yeah that's not happening and they don't have any recourse they can't stick around for an extra year they're going to graduate uh hope it's not virtually again but it looks like that mm -hmm. um, and so they're just there it's a lost season and a lost opportunity meanwhile at the colleges like i just mentioned you've got student athletes that are sticking around an extra year so mm -hmm. potential spots that would have been filled for the on behalf of the graduating seniors some of those spots a lot of those spots aren't going to be there um, for incoming recruits. The other thing that's entering into this, especially at the college level, is how much of the pandemic and the lack of action and the lack of sponsorship um, and the lack of, of gate um, can the budgets take. Right. Um, Kevin Blue, who, is, who left UC Davis a uh, couple of weeks ago, was brilliant in all regards and one of his um, uh, special um, <laughs> special abilities was keeping a solid eye on the budget yeah. uh, in a budget that that can reach 41 million dollars a year now um, blue told me before he left that he expected for this fiscal year which runs through um, the end of the sports season in, in uh, June, that there was going to be about a $2 million shortfall hmm. and that there were other avenues in which that shortfall was going to be made up. So it wasn't at this point to the point like some other schools like Stanford and a, a couple of major schools in the Midwest that were set, citing COVID and, and lack of auxiliary income sure. um, to cut a myriad number of sports. Uh, I think it was six that Stanford just cut, mm -hmm. partially because of the pandemic, partially because they were overloaded for a school of 8,500. Um, but there, there's a lot of other schools that are gonna see it. And it's not, it's not just a simple case of cutting a sport because it doesn't make any money. If you have a woman's sport, and I, I apologize to UCD for saying this, there's no implication here, <laughs> but if you have a woman's sport like field hockey, for example, and you find that, that the returns on that aren't equal to the investment, and you decide that in this pandemic, you have to cut that, that's one thing. The second consideration is, are you still in compliance with equal opportunity under mm -hmm. Title IX? And if you're not, then all of a sudden, maybe a deserving men's sport or reverse it. Maybe a men's sport's going to get cut and you're out of compliance with Title IX the other way. You've got to consider that. And if you cut one, you better even it out. Um, otherwise, you're not in compliance with Title IX. I'm just happy that I'm in newspapers and not in uh, uh, university yeah. athletic administration because 
the, this second shoe hasn't dropped yet. Yeah. So Davis and some other. Yeah, you see Davis and, and many other phys, physically responsible universities um, uh, aren't going to see the the big impact of of the pandemic yet. Mm -hmm. But then when you get into subsequent years and you've gone fully 18 months, for example, without any appreciable income, then, you know, who knows what's going to happen. And like everything else in this pandemic, I mean, sports are tied to so much. You mentioned revenue from gate, but there's a whole, in professional sports, certainly, there's a whole industry of people who, you know, work the venues and, and all of that has been, uh, you know, disrupted. Um, and you mentioned Kevin Blue, he was the athletic director for UC Davis for the past four years. And I have to wonder if, if you know, what kind of hurry Davis is in to replace that position at, at the moment. They may you know, they may feel like they have a little extra time for that search. I'm not sure. Well, they they have uh, convened a, a search committee, hired a, a search firm uh, from the Midwest, and uh, uh, are expected to have three viable candidates passed along to Chancellor May um, sometime in uh, March. Absolutely. And then it's up to the chancellor to to name the replacement. I think they'll move fairly quickly on this because um, um, it, although they have um, solid people in place, like the in, interim uh, athletic director Rocco De Luca um, has been a cog in the the fundraising wheel um, for UC Davis and and. Uh, for marketing uh, the UC Davis brand in the time that he's been here in Davis. It was a brilliant hire and a, and a guy that um, certainly is up to the task, whether it's interim as his title suggests now, or if it's long-term. Yeah. Uh, but um, it can't be, uh, it's, it's the key position to making sure that uh, Davis still had, the UC Davis still has all the right moves. Yeah. Okay. Pardon the before, term. before we run out of room and uh, run out of time in a few minutes here, what are you hearing from, um, you know, high school coaches and, and, and high school athletes? What is the, the general feeling or sentiment out there about what this past year has been like? To complete frustration on, on both of their parts, um, the student athletes and the coaches, but the, the, Lucky thing it, about being uh, involved with Davis High School is that the uh, athletic and overall administration uh, are solid. Tom McHale is principal, and and maybe one not maybe but one of the top athletic directors, um, prep athletic directors in the nation, and Jeff Lorenzen are at Davis High. Mm -hmm. They have twenty seven different varsity programs running at UC, at Davis High School. That's impressive. Um, it, it's, it, it's beyond the can of imagination. I don't know of another school um, in the U.S. that has 27 teams. Um, and the coaches that are on staff, there are a majority of the coaches are veteran coaches. The, um, the coaches are all about the kids. And for example, like like water polo coaches, uh, um, Stapleton and, and Wright and and track coach uh, uh, Spencer Elliott and football coach Steve Smite. It's all about the kids. It's all about their psyche, and it's all about understanding that this too shall pass. But if you have a missed opportunity, you know there will be others, and keep your head up. And uh, it's just totally impressive. Dan Gonzalez uh, in basketball has been there for 650 years and he's, he's just, he's uh, another uh, role model that parents and, and the student athletes can get behind. So uh, Davis High with their athletic uh, staff and, and it is just totally blessed. But it's, like I said before, my heart goes out to the kids in high school that are missing seasons that they can't make up. And through that, they're missing opportunities with 
next level schools that uh, otherwise might have seen them. Yeah, yeah. Well, Bruce, we are out of time. I want to thank you so much for joining us here today on the COVID-19 community report. And um, let, let's have you back in, in a, you know, a few months down the road as, and we'll see where we are with things and, and check in, okay? I appreciate it. Thanks for the work you do with your program. It's awesome. Great. Thanks so much. Thanks. With the tagline of bettering music in and from Davis, California, the Davis Independent Music Initiative is an emerging arts organization aimed at helping musicians to better and further their artistic careers. Joel Daniel heads up the effort and is with us today. Thanks for joining us, Joel. Uh, yeah, Autumn, thanks so much for having me. You bet. So, so tell us more, how and why did this effort start and what are the goals? Uh, the, it started it's the idea for uh, the Davis Independent Music Initiative, which I called Dimmy, um, right. started to percolate in my mind in early 2019. And I had just gotten through with working with the city on a bike safety video. And they asked if we could produce something educational in that realm with a um, video series that I pr produced called Hoot Quarters uh, related to a children's music band I play in. And uh, around that same time, I had been writing uh, uh, my first set of solo by myself grown up song grown up songs, which I say <laughs> to differentiate from the kids' music. And um, I just felt like I started to realize I'd been in Davis a really long time, and all the musicians I know just about since going back to '98 are gone. Uh, and my rents were also going up uh, pretty drastically. And there were, you know, further, less and less, fewer and fewer uh, venues to play in. And I just thought, you know, um, you know, the city is interested in cultivating art. And if we could just, if I could think of a way to build something that could last over a period of years, um, being one, and also being in a position where I was a musician that had been here longer than most, uh, that would be a good thing to, to try to start. Right. And so... Right. What I came up with was the uh, proposal for Dimmy, which was, uh, I said, look, Davis, um, I'm a musician. I've been here a long time. I'm writing these songs and I know how to make a record at every step because I've done it time and time again. And so I said, um, give me $5,000, which was the most I could ask for under the grant I was writing. And in return, you know, when this is done, there will be uh, new music that comes from this. I will play the show live. I will host it on a, uh, a site where the community can listen to this new music for free. Every show that I play in support of this, I will say Davis, Cal from Davis, California. And also, uh, um, I'll teach some classes on, um, you know, writing music, producing music, and uh, marketing and promotion so that uh, other musicians in town that might not have the experience that I've been lucky enough to have uh, can uh, start to learn about these things on a deeper level. And then, right. and then, uh, and this was, track. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Th and this was the most important part, which is that don't give me the money unless you would be willing to give it to somebody else the following year and somebody else the following year so that we can start to build something from the ground up so that in 10 years, we can all go on Spotify, or maybe it will be Elon Musk's Neuralink that we all have in our brains by then. And we can just listen to these, uh, all this new music that has come from our town. And uh, all these musicians will be out in the world saying, and yeah, I'm from Davis, California, and Davis is awesome, and you should come there. Yeah. And of course, as I said, the pandemic struck. And one of the things that's happened is the arts grants funding in Davis was eliminated last year and we're looking at an at probably another year without yeah. that so in in that interim you know musicians have have taken a, a really hard blow beyond rising rents and and all of that and lack of venues now there are no venues available um no no restaurants that they can play in no community gatherings and so so i do realize it's been really hard we have such a we have just a couple of minutes together so let's get into the you, you've done a, a weekly song doctor for, for a while during the pandemic where people can uh, uh, upload songs, get, share them, get critiqued. Um, and so you've got this virtual community going on, but now you do have some money to give away. So tell us about that. Yeah, so um, 
we have uh, the talks didn't happen, but the, we have been hosting the Song Doctor, and I did ask the city to keep this going. And while they have a limited budget this year, they did allocate sixty five hundred dollars to Dimmy, uh, and we've created a committee. And now that money will go to a musician, a band or musician from Davis this year. Uh, and we have a website uh, www. Davis I mi.com and the application is there it's due march 1st uh 2021 and um yeah i'm just very excited that there will be that this is going to be a springboard for somebody else to to make something new from our town you know that's really cool because that that's an actual chunk of change it's not like here's a thousand dollars try to do something with it or here's two sixty five hundred dollars is is enough to get you know a little studio time a, a little yep. marketing help whatever it is that they most need so that's very very cool let's give the website again because it is not dimmy and i i want to make sure people can get yeah. there yeah so it's uh it's davis which is the davis part of dimmy i Letter I, letter M, letter I. So Davis, letter I, letter M, letter I, dot com. All right. Hey, Joel, I'm sorry we have such a short time, but thanks so much for joining me today. And I'm going to keep sharing this info um, up until the applications are due. And we'll share it out through DMA and Catered in a variety of ways. And, and hopefully we'll reach the right people. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks for all your work. All right, you have been listening to the COVID-19 Community Report here on KDRT 95.7 FM in Davis, California. Thanks for tuning in. 